Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nolan Nerdcast movie review of Batman v Superman: colon, Dawn of Justice. The only way to say it properly, officially. Um, I'm Matt. I'm Chris, and we are the Nolan Nerds, and we are here to give you a spoiler-free review of BVS DOJ: colon, colon. Oh, it's important to have the colon in there. So, hot take, Chris. Go. I don't understand the bad reviews. I was thoroughly entertained the whole time. You can't be entertained anymore, Chris. That doesn't count. Oh, well, it does, because I had a good time watching it. Is it Citizen Kane? No. Then your movie's garbage. Citizen Kane's garbage. I know it is. Um, the hot takes. Anyway, uh, first scorching. off, thanks to uh, the Grand Theater and Esplanade once again. And I like seats. reclining. For oh, movie. those seats are so good. Oh, I, just, I love it. it. It's gotten to the point that when we go to have to go to other theaters for reasons, it's just like, they're the worst. The worst. But you know what? We're here to talk about a movie. Yeah. Let's talk about the things that have been points of discussion and contention since the get-go. Sure. Okay. I'm going to get this out of the way. We're not going to talk too much about Superman because here's the thing. Did you like Henry Cavill in Man of Steel? Did you not like him? He's literally the same character. He needed more to do in this he movie. Did. Uh, it felt like a lot of the movie was people telling him how to feel and like to do things, and he was just like, all right. Yeah. Uh, ben Affleck. Great. Great. I, uh, great Bruce Wayne. Well, he's he's very good in in the in the Batman they've cast him, in, which is this older Batman, the Arkham Knight Batman. Well, they watched a lot of Arkham before they choreographed any of those fight scenes. They played a lot of the Arkham games. Yes. Uh, uh, but here's the thing: like he was Batman for twenty years. Yeah, he's a grizzled old man. He's a grizzled old man, Batman. And I love the fact that he did twenty years of Bat crime, and then they were just like, "That's not important." Yeah. You know what? And and kudos to them for. Just condensing the Batman origin story into the opening credits. Oh, you know, I love this, it. At this point, we don't need it. We don't need the uh, the harrowing tale of the young man whose parents were gunned down. No. Uh, so, good. that that um, Gal Gadot. Great. She was really Wonder awesome. Wonder Woman stole every scene she was in. Yeah. Uh, she, her, uh, her encounter in the final fight scene was excellent. Yes. Uh, and then the final uh, casting point of discussion has been uh, Lex Luthor. Jesse Eisenberg. I thought he was good for most of it. I think he I know, fell apart at the end. I know. I heard you say that. Uh, I agree. I yeah. think he did. I think he, uh, de without the spoilers, devolved a little. Yeah. Um, but, man, he, he just, you know, he's he brought a different take to Lex. Which I really liked. I, I kind of liked the... Um, Oh, what's his name? The guy that runs Facebook. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. He's, he's, he's channeling Mark Zuckerberg, but as an evil, crazy person. Right. Not just a crazy And person. I like that, again, they didn't hit us over the head with unnecessary backstories. We didn't get... In, like, a couple lines, we got Lex's dad beat him, and he made the company out of nothing, and he's a genius and really good at what he does. And he's very psychotic. Yes. Yeah. It's And, and obsessed with this, this uh, concept of God's... Among us, gods and, and devils yeah. and everything. It, it's yeah, it's good times. It's it, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, the the whole movie does a great job of building off the criticisms of Man of Steel, which was the thing it had to do. Yes, like like literally the first ten, twenty minutes of the movie is the end of Man of Steel as seen through Batman's eyes, which I, I always thought was a great concept. It's a great idea, but and also one of the most important things that they learned was that people did not like the destruction in Man of Steel, and so in the climactic fight scene. They uh, make a point of every time the battle shifts location, they go, oh, don't worry. It's an abandoned area. That, uh, that island is empty. Yes. Don't worry. It's nighttime, so the business district is abandoned. That courthouse is abandoned. So it's just, it's great. I, I like that because I was tired of hearing people complain about that. Well, so it was, kudos it's to It's a you. valid complaint. It is, and now it's not. I mean, it still is. Well, for that movie. Yeah, sure. But it's not a complaint for this movie. Exactly. So, but yeah, uh... What do you want to talk about? Um, the, the the special effects were exactly what you would hope the movie. I did. wasn't wowed, oh, and I wasn't disappointed in them. Yeah. Now, uh, so let's talk about the central conflict: yeah. the actual the, fight between BVS yeah. colon Dawn of DOJ. Uh, without you know really saying word for word, I thought it delivered. I thought it did in the sense that it adapted the Dark Knight Returns uh, fight scene. Right. 
and it added a couple of tweaks to for this movie. But for the most part, it was it was a very great and trend faithful. I, I will say it it took Dark Knight Returns and mixed it a little DC Universe online. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, I also like that they they kind of uh, toyed with the idea of Superman as as the uh, as the Jesus figure, mm -hmm. the the over Jesus figure of last movie was has now been uh, tackled by everyone. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, now that's not to say this movie was perfect. Uh, there are a bunch of extended dream sequences that I felt really dragged the movie this down. This movie is so long. And 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 one of the uh, the dream sequences was awesome, but completely out of context and was not explained very well. No, it, the um, problem is the problem is the movie's very long, and you could easily cut a half an hour to forty five minutes out of this movie, and it would be fine. That said. I'm very curious to see what they what they ended up cutting from the director's cut. Right. So I'm, I really hope there's an option to just see deleted scenes well, without no. having to watch the whole thing again. Nope. Gotta Man. watch it all at once. Come on. But um, my that's my only real complaint of this movie. Uh, I found it very entertaining, but it's it's so long and there's there's a lot of false endings. Uh, very Lord they, of the Rings. They Lord of the Rings that yeah very very strongly. But uh, you know, I didn't have any major complaints, and I'm sure you know we're we're like 30 minutes out of the theater. So I'm sure they'll come in time. Of course. And you know what? But also, uh, we get a lot of glimpses into the the upcoming Justice League. It, it, it laid, this laid a lot of groundwork. It laid a lot of groundwork for the future of the Marvel, uh, I mean, so the DC Cinematic Universe. <laughs> right. Um, and it was it's, it's very ambitious. You know, you take all these characters, and then you try to squeeze them in, and then you try to squeeze out, like, a, a coherent a, story. A flat narrative. Because Iron Man took, it took a lot of movies before they got the... A Marvel Cinematic Universe, even close to what they try to do in this first movie, right? And so, and I think I, I think the glimpses and cutaways that they did was worked fine. well enough. They were, they were pretty uh, perfect. You got your glimpses, and they didn't bog the movie down with it, and it di it didn't uh, feel well. Bloated is not the right word because it was a long movie, but it didn't feel bloated. It didn't feel bloated. It was just it was just very. There's just there's just one sequence that they don't explain very well. Is it a dream? Is it a premonition? Is it Time travel. I, I don't know. It's it's unclear. It is. But uh, it was kind of cool. There is also one moment of the movie, a big reveal, that they don't explain at all, and you just have to kind of extrapolate. And once you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Oh, sure. Especially if you've rewatched Man of Steel lately, and uh, you realize that it ties in very nicely to the... It's a, it's a progression that makes sense, but if you are like most people and you're a few years removed from Man of Steel, you're going to be like, wait, what? Yeah, how'd that happen? Uh, but uh, rest assured, it totally makes sense. I like Amy Adams in this. Uh, she had more to do than she had in Correct. Man of Steel. I think she's a good Lois Lane, but Lois Lane's hard. So yeah, uh, it, it's kind of yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. I like the general. He's always good. Uh, Perry Perry White's awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean these he's, are these he's kind of a nothing. They didn't exactly. They don't have anything to do, but they were still enjoyable on screen. I. I liked him. Lawrence Fishburne was a great uh, guy who just kind of wanted to do what he wanted to do. What? I didn't say anything. I, I know. I'm looking at you. I didn't do anything. It's kind of hard to judge him. Well, did you laugh at anything he said? No. Oh, I did. Well, there we go. That that's. Are you good? Are you a good person? You'll enjoy Perry White. Are you Chris? You won't. We can talk about the dourness and the seriousness of this movie for for a literal yeah. thesis. Mm -hmm. uh, they could use more jokes. They the can. jokes, the jokes they had, were very good and were very welcome. But they were they were all at the end of the movie. And it almost made uh, it almost made Lex an even more enjoyable character because he was somehow the lighthearted part of the first half of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that we just have to accept that that's the direction DC is going with their cinematic universe. They want to be the more serious, uh, dramatic type of thing where Marvel takes a lighter approach. It still has its serious moments, but for the most part, they are the quote-unquote fun movies. Sure. Uh, and I, I think that's a valid, Chris. Not every movie has to be the Marvel Universe, and they have to differentiate themselves somehow. Uh, that said, it seems like this approach has... It's a very divisive approach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always going to be as long as they keep this tone up. Yeah. It'll be interesting when they get to characters like the Flash. Right. Who are traditionally a little light, lighter. Who have not worked well in darker 
kind of things. I don't know. So, I love Flashpoint. That's one. I know. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else? The score was there. It, it was, it was a impressive. Movie. It was a movie with the score. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's it's. You don't come to our reviews for uh, in-depth analysis and uh, professional grade critiques. You come to us because did did we enjoy it as just a general audience type of people, which we did. We did, and that pretty much uh, is the end all be all of it. I was very disappointed that there was no after credit stinger, but if that saves you ten minutes of sitting through credits, you're welcome. Spoiler: There's no after credit stinger. Yeah, that's the only spoiler in this film in this review. So, yeah, uh, Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice. Be aware when taking your children. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like taking your kids to de de Deadpool. You, it's just, uh, I heard someone say that it was like 10 is a good age. Yeah. And I'm like, that's yeah. fine. As long as I think that's fair. Just be aware. Yes. Like, because the, there's lots of toys and stuff, and they're very marketing it towards kids. With cereals and toys. Right. And but everything. then again, they did the same thing with stuff like Terminator. There was toys and everything yeah, well, for it and RoboCop. That's and weird, too. It is. So be aware. Yeah. So anyway, I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And we are the Nola Nerds, and this has been... Batman v Superman colon Dawn of Justice. You love saying it like that. I do. All right. So I refer to it. Peace out. <laughs>